Are you a junk journal beginner and totally overwhelmed by the choices of adhesives and not sure which adhesive to use for what? Do you have journal pages that you feel you messed up because you can see the glue even after it's dry? You see this bit of glue right there? Or for example here underneath the lace, you see that glue right there? Or maybe you have journal pages which are warped because you used the wrong glue. Like this one here. Then this video is for you. Stick to these adhesives and never be frustrated with your results again. Welcome, it's Barbara from Vienna, Austria and I am a junk journal artist. These recommendations that I'm about to give you are based on personal experience over the past five years of making and working in junk journals and none of these brands are sponsored. Since climate and humidity are big factors when working with glues, your experiences may differ from mine. You might have a certain glue that you love to bits and that's great. It would be awesome if you could share those in the comments below. But let me share my favorites. Number one, Art Glitter Glue. It's water-based, non-toxic, dries acid-free. Despite its name, it does not actually have glitter inside, but rather it was developed to adhere glitter. The metal tip and stainless steel needle do not come with the bottle, so you need to buy them separately, and I would strongly suggest you do. You can also make a fun dangle for your metal tip, like the one I made here. And use that instead of the stainless steel needle that comes with the bottle. And I made this dangle following a tutorial by Tracy Fox, which I will link for you below. The dangle just helps to keep better track of your needle and it's just a fun accessory. I buy the big bottles to refill this small handy bottle, which is much more cost effective, of course. This glue is usually not shipped in cold months because it freezes and then the glue becomes runny. I've actually had that happen to me in the past, which is actually quite frustrating because it's quite pricey. I love using this glue, of course, for small embellishments. For example, for these recent collages, for little pieces like these, for the butterfly, even for the E, but also for gluing on pages like these here, because you don't need a lot of it and it does not warp the paper like some other glues do. Also, it's great for adhering tuck spots or pockets. So for example, I have my latest ephemera here from my scrapbooking paper kit. So if I wanted to adhere this pocket and add this tag into it, you see there's not a whole lot of space here for me to add glue because if I add glue, for example, this kind of glue, it will ooze out and then I wouldn't have enough room to attach my tag. But in this case, if I were to put it on this paper bag with the metal tip, I just get a thin line of glue and that way I know there won't be a lot of oozing and I can easily put my tag in afterwards. And I just love the fact that you don't use up a lot of the glue because not that much comes out. When working with glue and adhering things onto your pages, I find it also helps to use a cloth or even a kitchen towel would work to get rid of any glue that has oozed out. That way you have no shine afterwards. And now I can still easily add my tag. I also have this one, which is four ounces compared to the smaller one with two ounces. And just to show you the tip comparison. So this is the original tip and this is the one with the metal stuck on it, which is of course just stuck on the plastic tip. It's not screwed on and the tip will fit both bottles. So let me demonstrate the difference so that you can see how thick the glue comes out normally. So with the regular tip, this is what you get. And with the metal tip, 
this is what you get. So you see there's a huge difference there. Another favorite is Liquitex Matte Gel. It's an acrylic medium. It's water resistant when dry. It's not yellowing and it's absolutely matte. Not like, for example, Mod Podge Matte, which is not matte at all. It's not the cheapest, but it is so worth it. And I use it mostly for collaging and anything else which is fairly flat, where I don't want to worry about any shiny glue showing. Let me show you an example. So on these two collages, I adhered this dried flower with the matte gel and a brush. And you can see it is completely matte. You can't see glue anywhere and it's just perfect. Another fact that I really love about this matte gel is it does not dry out. A lot of other gels dry out, especially if they're in a fairly large container such as this. But this matte gel doesn't dry and I don't need to add any saran wrap or anything on top. It's perfect over long periods of time. So when I use this in collages, the great thing is I will just put down my paper, take a brush, and I can go over the whole paper and it doesn't matter. I don't have to worry about any glue oozing out like I would if I were to use a PVA glue, for example, or using a glue stick. We will talk about glue sticks in a moment. That's a whole nother subject. But this one is just worry-free, easy to use, and just a fantastic product. Next up, we have the Beacon 3-in-1 Glue or Colal All-Purpose Glue. I actually currently have this Colal glue in this small three-in-one bottle because it's handier. They have the same ingredients, they smell the same, and by the way, the smell is very strong. They look and feel exactly the same. I believe it's also the same as Fabri-Tac glue. In Europe, the Colal glue is more readily available and cheaper, especially if you buy it in large bottles like these. So this is a thousand millimeter bottle. The cola glue comes in small bottles as well, but I don't like those as much because they have a twist cap and they have a little spatula type thing on top to spread the glue, which I find is always in the way. It's a transparent solvent based glue. It grabs fast and dries quickly. It's labeled as advanced craft glue and is highly flammable. So I would not use this with kids. Since it's waterproof and it has no water in it, it does not make your paper warp, which is why I like using it. Let me demonstrate this. The cool thing is this tip is always ready to go. Very easy to apply. This is just a regular copy paper. Let's just fold this over. And you see it is totally flat on both sides, no warping, even when it dries, this is not going to change. It also works great with fabric, but since it's very shiny when it dries, I don't like using it on lace, for example. So I have a piece of lace here. Now, if this were my journal page and I were to add some here and then add my lace on top going to leave this a couple of minutes so it's been about 10 minutes and you see here even though it's dry you see it's shiny so that's something I don't like having underneath my lace the next glue is more like a category which is the PVA glue or tacky glue these are great all-purpose glues with thick white glue that dries transparent most of them grab very quickly as well. They are water-based and therefore better for the environment. However, they need to be shipped and stored frost-free, like the art glitter glue. You can use them for cardstock and other surfaces. However, since they are water-based, it makes your paper warp. So again, let me demonstrate. This is another piece of that same copy paper. I could take any one of these. The results will be similar. So again, it's been about 10 minutes and look what we have here. 
we have some major warping on both sides of our paper. Not like our 3-in-1 or cola glue, which is still completely flat. And this would also be the result with the art glitter glue, so that would be as flat. I know many crafters use this Aline's Tacky Glue. I only have this tiny bottle, which is 0 0.66 ounces, which is really handy for traveling. I also have this one from Bösna, which is a German craft store, but there are many brands which are great. It's a water-based white polyvinyl acetate dispersion glue. That's a mouthful. <laughs> and it's solvent-free. So I bought this bottle, which I refill. The tip clogs up sometimes, but I love how thick the glue is and how quickly it grabs. I use these kinds of glues for fabric or any other small bits I need to stick down on a page. For example, when I glue fabric on a cover, like I did here, I will thin down the glue with a little bit of water and then spread it with a brush and then you have a perfect application. I'm also adding this textile glue in this category. I assume this is not available overseas. This brand Creation can be found at the Dutch chain Action. It's very cheap and I've also seen it on eBay Germany and I just love this glue and I actually use it for paper bits as well. Anything that I'm not worried about warping. Moving on to glue sticks. I'm not the biggest fan of glue sticks. First, because you need two hands to use it. And while it may seem like an advantage that no glue oozes out when pressing down on paper or cardstock, it also means that you need to apply it all the way to the edges, which means you always need to put something underneath the substrate you're gluing. For example, I want to glue this copy paper on something else. I cannot just take the glue stick and put it on. So I need two hands, I need one to hold down my paper, and if I would just put it on here, I would either not get it all the way to the edges, or if I would go over the edges, I of course need to put something underneath. Like this. You get your fingers all sticky, then you always need a space on your desk to have these scrap pieces. Another fact that I absolutely don't like about glue sticks is that they are glossy when they dry. And a lot of glue sticks don't hold up for years and years. And also many of them get really gloopy and messy. I mean, this one is okay. This one is again from Bösner, the German store. But for example, this one, I was so happy with this when I bought it. And this might be a problem with the climate that I'm in here in Austria. It is fairly humid here. So if I try to apply this, look how gloopy this is. You don't want that on your craft project. I find that glue sticks are quite pricey given that they don't last long, but they are practical to take with you when you want to craft in another location, for example. I know there are crafters who swear by Yoohoo or Prit Stick, but I don't have great experiences with either of them. However, there was one particular glue stick that blew me away, which is the large glue stick by Tombow. Only the large glue stick, not the small one, which is really odd since you would expect them to be the same. So we used that large tumble glue stick in a book binding class, which I took a few years ago to glue on the cover. And wow, that was stuck down like cement. I wish I could show you, but I have no recollection of where that book is at the moment. But the downside to that glue stick is that it's expensive and it dried out a few years later and I had to throw it out. So what would I use a glue stick for? I rarely use them for all of the above mentioned reasons, but I do like having one on hand for little things like gluing together cardboard circles for closures. For example, I recently made a coin envelope for my Keeper of Memory book, which is attached back here. And I made these circles, which I punched out with a regular punch. And since the cardboard I was using wasn't so thick, I just glued three pieces together using a glue stick. I didn't want to bother with glue oozing out when I put them together. And I wanted a glue that would grab quickly. So that was fine for this particular case. I 
I also quickly have to mention double-sided tape. I know double-sided tape a lot of times is not super strong, so over the years it won't hold up super well. But there is one example in particular where I always choose double-sided tape over a liquid glue, and that is when you're dealing with the Diva Vellum. <laughs> If you've used vellum in the past, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So let's demonstrate. Let's use our PVA glue. Let's pretend we're trying to adhere a tuck spot. You see all the warping here we have on the vellum instantly. Obviously we won't see the glue because it will dry transparent, but the warping will stay. So instead I would use a double-sided tape. Usually I would do this more precisely, but just for demonstrating purposes, I'll just do this. And of course, when I adhere this, there's no warping whatsoever. If I have the possibility, I would always attach vellum by sewing over it with the sewing machine or even stapling. Do I have and use other adhesives? Sure. Over the years, I've tried many different brands as well as no-name products, but I keep coming back to the ones that I have mentioned. We think we're saving money by buying cheap glue, but in the end, often we don't use them up because they don't hold up to our expectations and we get frustrated when we mess up a project because we use cheap glue. Also, we want our journals to last for many years and not to fall apart, right? So I really hope this was helpful. Love you guys. Mwah, mwah.